I am Michelle with two L's and I am one half of Force of Light Entertainment. Today I'm here to give you my review, my uh, continued coverage of Leslie Headland's The Acolyte. Uh, yes, uh, we are now on episode five of this uh, atrocious television show. And I'm here to tell you, despite what some people may say, this episode does not get much better. Uh, yes, it uh, it has more action. Um, a lot is happening without very much happening. We'll get into that into a second, just in a second. Uh, before we get started, though, if you are not yet subscribed to Force Fight Entertainment and you enjoy movie and television reviews, you enjoy reactions, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Also, give this video a thumbs up. Uh, let's go ahead and get into chapter, or not chapter, episode five of The Acolyte, uh, which is called Night. Uh, last episode was day, and this episode is night. Um, and, you know, just kind of the, the amount of time they took to come up with that name kind of uh, is a kind of shows you how much uh, they really thought about this episode, I would say. Uh, I, I told you last week, you just kind of had them going through this forest, and then it ends with a, what I think what they thought was a cliffhanger of the Sith character showing up. And having he he appears like Mary Poppins, and he throws Osha aside, and you know there's going to be the standoff between him and the Jedi, and that's where this picks up. And I'm just going to say I don't see a way to discuss this and not get into spoilers. So there is absolutely about to be spoilers uh, starting right now. So if you care, you've been warned. Uh, I'm about to to get spoilers. So so this episode, the entirety of this episode is the Jedi basically just getting slaughtered. By this uh, Sith-like character, we get the the reveal of the Sith-like character, and it ends. Actually, we'll just we'll just walk through this. So this episode picks up again right where the last episode left off, and we have the Sith. Like I said, the Sith character. I mean, he just he just mows through the Jedi. Uh, the Jedi absolutely suck apparently at using lightsabers and fighting. Uh, I mean, he just straight up murders. Like all of them, basically. There are like, I mean, I don't know how many, I'd have to go back and count, but there's at least, there's well over five uh, Jedi here. And he just goes through them like, like they're trash. Like this is, this is nothing to him. Uh, which begs the question, which begs the question, uh, how did, you know, these Jedi have been training since they were younglings, since they were small children. Uh, how is this particular uh, Sith-like character who has been training him? How is he this skilled with a lightsaber, with something that requires uh, training? Uh, who, you know, who's been training this character that this that this guy can take on a, a, a Jedi master in soul? Uh, but but anyways, I will say this: uh, all the Jedi die except Soul. All of them. I, I wasn't expecting that. And that's where people be like, oh, well, this is great. I didn't expect that. But here's the thing, guys. Because this show is so poorly written, because the show has not done what a good show does, which makes you be invested and care about the characters, when these Jedi characters that we've kind of gotten to know a little bit, when they start dying, when I say I felt nothing that is the understatement of the decade. I mean, I felt nothing. Could it have cared less as these characters get killed off because the show has given me no reason to be invested in them. It has given me no reason to care about what happens to anyone in the show. Uh, besides, I, I, I like Soul. I like Soul. He, he's a good character. Outside of him, don't really care. Uh, but yeah, dude, just mur and I will say dude, because uh, well, we get the reveal of who, you know, the big mystery. Well, spoiler alert, again, all this is spoiled. Uh, it is absolutely who I, who I hinted at last week of, well, there's one person that's been in my top two of who this could be, and he's there, and all of a sudden went missing, and all of a sudden the Sith character shows up. Gee, I wonder who it is. Well, we get the reveal. And it is uh, this dude. Um, I, I I don't even know his name. 
That is where we are. Uh, five episodes in, I don't even care to know this character's name, and I don't know his name. He's the dude I said you could. You look at him and you can tell he needs to take a shower. He's that dude. Uh, so it's absolutely who I thought it was last week. Again, not some big mystery. Ooh. Uh, the, the big mystery for me, and, and I will say this, I will give one positive. I think this actor does a good job. I think he gives it his best. I think, he, you know, he's a pretty good actor. Um, but my, my issue with this is I just, I don't really buy that this character is so well-trained in the dark side of the force. Uh, I, I just really don't. One, I think his age even makes it hard for me to believe. And, and then secondly, again, who's been training him? Uh, he this this is not self taught. It, clearly, he is but he's well trained with a lightsaber. I mean, again, he just demolishes the uh, the Jedi that are there, and also that that brings up. I have never seen so many uh, Star Wars. I mean, so many lightsaber hilt like so lightsabers just destroyed. Like, I mean, just boom, just he just like kills the Kyber crystal. Lightsabers dead. It just kept happening in this episode. And I also want to point out, you see how dark it is? This is like how dark the entire episode was. And, and I know they're in a forest and it would be absolutely dark, but for us as the viewer, I, I can't see what's going on. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't see what's going on when it looks like that, but yeah, that's the dude. He is the Sith. Uh, there, there's no mystery on that anymore. Uh, I will say things that I thought were quite ridiculous. So Soul sends Osha back with, I think his name was Yord of the Jedi and Yord gets hit. I mean, he gets sliced on his leg, like singed. I mean, let's just say, I think it definitely would make it hard to run and do just run in like he's Forrest Gump in the, in the forest. I mean, un, untouched, unfazed by the, uh, the, again, the lightsaber blade going through a little bit of his leg. Um, but then I will say this. So Osha, they hear that, that the Jedi, you know, the ones that are remaining need help. And again, Yord's, he's been told by his master to take Osha back, get her back, uh, which now all of a sudden they just call her civilian for some reason, get her back to the ship. And eventually Osha's like, they're going to die if we don't go back and help. And, and, and they do, and they listen. And guess what happens to Yord? He gets his neck snapped. It was like, well, great idea, Osha. There's a reason why his Jedi Master wanted him to take you and get away, uh, because only a Jedi Master was going to be able to take this, handle this guy clearly after he just wiped out half of them. Um, so basically, Osha, in a way, is responsible for Yord getting killed because had Yord just listened to his master and not her, he'd still be alive. I just want to point that out. I want to point that one out. Um, but yes, yeah, so, so that, again, that dude, uh, let's, let's pull him up again. I mean, this dude can even, I mean, Jedi master soul struggles greatly with this character. Again, he kills everyone else and even a Jedi master. I mean, he goes toe to toe with them and it just kind of seems like, uh, short of, uh, the, the distraction that he needs that he would just kill him. And you also then in this episode, you have uh, May, May and Osha finally see each other. And May's like, oh, you know, I love you again. I want us to be a family again. And then she, you know, doesn't get the response she wants from Osha. So then Osha gets knocked out and May decides to take up to take her clothes. And she is going to trick uh, the and uh, how is she going to, how is she going to trick the Jedi? Uh, well, she is going to uh, find a good use for that lightsaber because you see her hair is a little bit longer than uh, Osha's hair. So we get this amazing shot in Star Wars. Uh, that's the thing. That happened. Uh, yes. I mean, just lightsaber can now just perfectly uh, cut hair. It was not uneven at all. Just, choom, just perfectly. She just, I mean, it's like she had just gone and seen, gone her hair done. Uh, that, yeah, the, I, I honestly, I, I laughed at that. It, it was probably one of the dumber things I've seen in Star Wars. 
Uh, this episode, though, that was the only thing that made me laugh. Uh, it, it just was a lot of action, and some of it looked okay, but it kind of felt, again, like a fan film in the sense of a lot of fan films do. Can, they can do great lightsaber battles, uh, but you're not really invested in the characters necessarily. And and with this, like, for me, Star Wars, a lightsaber battle, yeah, they can look cool, but, like, there needs to be some emotional weight behind it uh, for it to to really... Or just you care about the character, A or B, there. And in this case, like, I, I didn't really care about any of it. So it was just kind of a lot of, a lot happening, a lot action, but with no emotional weight and no real substance behind it. Like, you didn't really, you know, you just, you just don't really care, basically, a, about any of this. And I would say this, uh, in many ways, I, people might be surprised by me saying this. Like, I was bored watching this episode, even with all the action, because there's so little investment or interest in these characters, I was bored. It, was, it wasn't like that. I mean, some of it would catch my attention. Then other times I was like looking at my clock, like, uh, is this almost finished? Which again, this episode was slightly under 30 minutes. So basically the last two epi episodes should have been one about 50 minute episode. Uh, and, but, but it, we just get another less than 30 minutes episode from the acolyte. And again, we get all this happening, but nothing really happening. So that is how, that is how May is able to trick soul. Uh, she cut her hair and that, that begs a lot of other questions because the Sith character had already said that soul could read minds. So if soul can read minds, like, how does he not know, like, immediately, this is not Osha? Uh, how does he not sense this is not the same person? Osha is a pretty good, Osha, Osha seems to be a good person. Uh, May seems like a horrible person. How does he not sense that at all? That makes no sense to me. And especially since the show has already said he can read minds. Uh, well, even if he, he, even if she can block him from reading her mind, in this case, again, you're still not just sensing the difference. I don't even think that necessarily should be a Jedi quality. I think that's just kind of like some natural discernment of, oh, this this is a different person. Uh, but but no, uh, they're, they're off and she's off a soul. I'd say she's going to try to continue to her mission and, and to kill him. Um, so they go off, uh, which also leaves some, a confusing thing here because two seconds ago, May wants a relationship with her sister, but now she leaves her for dead in a forest that has creatures that can kill people and with this very dangerous Sith character that she knows well. And she's just like, bye Osha, fend for yourself. Like the motivations of this show don't make any sense. Uh, the show truly is nonsensical. It does it. It does so many things, so many motivations, things that the characters do. They just simply don't make a lot of sense. Um, and then another question that this kind of leads, uh, we know that uh, even though he's not been in the show, and, and thank God for that, quite quite frankly, uh, I don't want him in the show, uh, but we know that Jedi Master Yoda is very much alive and well. Uh, this is a hundred years before Phantom Menace, so he's not even super young. Like he's, he's definitely a Jedi Master at this point. Um, and when, say like in Attack of the Clones, when Anakin... Uh, takes out all the, the sand people. Yoda senses the distress of Anakin. Uh, he senses it multiple times throughout the prequels. Uh, he senses the moment that the younglings are taking out in Revenge of the Sith. So I'm supposed to believe that Jedi, Ma that uh, again, Jedi Master Yoda isn't sensing what's going on at all, uh, which leads to can can uh, for canon issues of, you know, they're not, the, the Sith, they say in Phantom Menace, the, the Sith haven't been around. Uh, I forget how long it's been, but well beyond a hundred years. Uh, so there, so the, there's creating canon issues, which I kind of feel like I know how they're going to try to solve them, but I just don't think they really work. It, it just doesn't necessarily work in the scope of Star Wars. Again, why are the, why are the Jedi Council, how does no one feel in the Force what just happened? Like they just lost like, like 10 Jedis uh, and Padawans at this place. Um, and we'll see. We'll see if they if they address that at all in the next episode. Who knows? I don't know. Um, 
who knows? Again, this the show is nonsensical. It doesn't make a lot of sense. So I'm not really expecting it to make a lot of sense. And also, I will last thing I will say as far as May and Osha's relationship, it is a very toxic relationship. Uh, anything with May at this point would just be very toxic. It, it's not. It's not good. Again, she leaves her for dead. It's. Uh, it's. It's pretty bad. Uh, there again. They, they. They. There's a few direct quotes uh, from Revenge of the. Let's see. From Revenge of the Sith. Uh, you have. You turn them against me. Uh, line. Uh, kind of definitely sounded like when Anakin says about Padme. You turned her against me to Obi Wan. Um, but yeah, this episode, guys. That's kind of my, I've kind of walked you through the entirety of this episode. Uh, it just, I, I know a lot of people will think, oh, well, it was better because there was more action. But just like meaningless action doesn't do a lot for me either. Again, action only means something to me if I'm invested in the characters and or in the story and where it's going. Is there some emotional weight to this for either them or the story? And I mean, I just... How could I be invested in these characters? The, the the writing is is like, good gosh, it's like elementary level. It's just it's truly bad. It's really bad. Uh, but but that's my thoughts on the acolyte Leslie Headland's the acolyte episode five. Let's see, we've got uh, six, seven, eight. we've got three left. Three left. We'll see what they do. I, I hope next week is more entertaining to me. Uh, by entertaining, I mean I hope there's more things for me to laugh at. Uh, this episode didn't give me quite as many things that to laugh at, except the haircut, really, it, it did kind of make me laugh. Uh, but yeah, this episode for me was just very, it was boring. Uh, they've all been boring. That's nothing new. But this one, it was just kind of a lot of meaningless action and some things that I just can't really buy and motivations I still don't really get. Um, but yeah. That is my thoughts on the Acolyte episode five. What do you guys think of the show? Uh, most of you, it seems, aren't even watching it. You're just watching these reviews, and, and that's why we do them. Uh, you are welcome to come hear my thoughts. Uh, hope you join in in the comments. But uh, share your thoughts below. And if you have not yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Also, give this video a thumbs up. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, remember to be a force of light. All right. Bye, guys.